Hey Booktube, it's Peg. I'm back at the History Shelf. Uh, it's a Sunday afternoon and I'm uh, just checking in to do a Vlogmas tag that um, Sean the Book Maniac and Britta Bowler um, uh, put together. And uh, Sean tagged all the female um, Booktube Booktubers and Britta did all the males. So it's a fun tag and uh, I will link their channels below in the description. But um, here's my version. Okay, so let me go to the first question, which is, V is for Voyage, um, a book that involves travel. So I have several books in my library that um, I could have chosen because I have a lot of adventure, nonfiction adventure, polar expedition, journals, um, journals of R.F. Scott, um, the worst journey in the world, um, things like that, plus more. But uh, I had to go with the first and the best, which is Homer's The Odyssey. So talk about a voyage. Um, this is just a classic. It cannot be beat. And uh, I've read this several times, and I will keep reading it all my life. The other book that I considered showing for voyage was uh, the Iliad. Um, it begins with a voyage and then uh, they're in, in place for about 10 years at Troy. But uh, so you really have to go with the Odyssey for it's just a tales of epic adventures and voyages and uh, you just can't beat Homer, man. You cannot beat Homer. Okay, so the next question is LGBTQIA plus. I think I have them all. Um, so name your favorite, uh, I'm going to my notes here, recommend a favorite book or author. So I am going to be naming Sarah Waters. Um, I was first going to go with Rita Mae Brown, and I know that Amy at um, from a Dusty Bookshelf uh, had mentioned her, and it just brought back a lot of memories. I started reading those, um, those you know, I guess gay-themed books with Rita Mae Brown. Um, she really opened my eyes to you know, didn't know that that world existed. And they were funny, super funny. Um, but uh, those had an impact. But now as an adult, um, I really enjoy Sarah Waters. Um, she is very clever. Her plotting is, uh, it just, you can't beat it. It just, it's surprising. And uh, I've read almost all of her books. I still haven't made it through The Little Stranger. Uh, which is one of those books that's a departure for her. Um, uh, I started reading it, and I haven't finished The Little Stranger. But um, love Sarah Waters. I can't wait for her next book. Um, so my favorite, though, my favorite Sarah Waters is, and I don't have the actual, I have the paperback. I just can't find it. And I've read it twice, and I'll probably read it again. But I do have <laughs> DVD. <laughs> but my favorite Sarah Waters, drumroll please, is Fingersmith. And this is the BBC adaptation. This was a great adaptation. Um, I think it was a two-parter uh, with Sally Hawkins and, uh, oh, what's this lady's name? I just, I've seen her before many things. Um, Elaine Cassidy. So this was, they, they were great together. They played Maud and Susan just, or Sue, Sue just perfectly. So uh, Fingersmith, wow, what a story. Um, just set in like uh, Victorian England. It's really Dickensian in so many ways. And uh, surprising, I'm not gonna, if you're interested in reading, I'm just gonna say there are surprises. And uh, wow, I love it when a writer can just blow you away while you're sitting there and you're like, no way, you know? So that was Sarah Waters and I love her work. I read her most recent book, I bought it in hardcover. Like I couldn't, you know, obviously I can't wait for it uh, when she has new books that come out and it was The Paying Guests and I, I really enjoyed that one too. Um, the, the one I least liked was The Night Watch. Um, I just didn't quite grasp what she was trying to accomplish with it. Um, but yeah, uh, Fingersmith, Tipping the Velvet. Uh, I've read Affinity. I've read all of her books basically except for The Little Stranger. So there is that next question o is for oldie but goldie and goldie's the name of my dog but <laughs> one of my dogs but anyway um a book you read a long time ago that holds a special place in your heart well 
that would have to be Laura Ingalls Wilder, Little House on the Prairie. Um, and this is my uh, Library of America edition. Uh, this is the volume one. It comes in a. I love these these hardcover slipcases. They really protect the book. But um, yeah, I do I do miss having the actual um, books that they came out with when I was a kid in the 70s. And I think the 80s, and I think they still have that same artwork. I forget who the artist was, but I love the artwork on the original Little House books. Just loved them. So I mean, obviously there's no cover here, but. Uh, I love the book so much. I loved Laura. I really, uh, I really related to the character of Laura. Um, you know, she's kind of a tomboy. She's just kind of free, wild, independent spirit. Um, I just, they're just great. And of course, I love the TV show. I was a huge fan, and you know, eh, to me, this, this is, this will never, this will never grow old. Love it. Love Laura Ingalls Wilder. Okay. Moving along. Next question. Ooh, M is for mass market paperback. Do you like them? Why or why not? Ooh, show us a couple. Oh, talk about a couple you have. Okay, so I wasn't prepared for for showing you a couple. Let me see. You you want to know why? I can't show you a couple right now. It's because I hate some. Yes, I am with Sharon on this. I do not care for mass market paperbacks. Um. I will read them in a pinch if I have to, if there's nothing else, but um, I find that the binding, it's not even binding, you know, it's just glue or whatever, but I mean, I think I was trying to read a couple of thrillers in the new tall, I don't know what they call those tall versions, tall, narrow um, mass market paperbacks, and uh, you know, they I hate them, and... <laughs> Oh, you know, the other thing I don't like about mass market paperbacks, especially the older ones, that the ink just seems to really run off from the page. So you'd be reading it, and then you, you're done, and then you look at your thumbs, and they're just, like, black. You know, and I'm just, I just don't like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm not a big fan of mass market paperbacks, so I don't have a lot laying around. Now, uh... Well, having said that, well, these aren't mass markets, but they're the Dover Thrift Editions. Hang on, let me, let me see if I can grab this. Okay. Yeah, these are the Dover Thrift Editions. Um, these are, these are okay because they're a little bit wider and, uh, well, they're just nicer, you know. So I wouldn't consider these mass market paperbacks, but... I do have paperbacks lying around the house. Oh, and this is Booker T. Washington, by the way. These are two books um, up from slavery, which is his autobiography. Classic. And My Larger Education. So, good stuff there. All right, so that's, yeah, I don't have a lot of good things to say about mass market paperbacks. I know a lot of people enjoy them for the convenience, and sure they are. They're easy to tote and take around, but I'd rather read a huge hardcover um, version of a book as opposed to like say Stephen King's The Stand. My sister's reading it right now and she has this uh, someone loaned her or gave her this paperback and it's just completely beat up. <laughs> of course I'm projecting. I'm like do you would you like a newer version for Christmas? And she's like no this works just fine you know. <laughs> That's just me. I'm like I could buy you a really nice edition you know but no. It works for, for many people. It just doesn't work for me. Okay, A is for all in the family, whether you come from a family of readers or, oh, do you come from a family of reader, readers, or if you don't, and tell us about it. So, um, so I'll start with my parents. My mom was a reader when she had time to read. Um, I did see her, she would read um, mysteries, uh, I was introduced to Agatha Christie through my mom. Um, uh, let's see. What other books? I think she read some historical fiction, um, things like that. My dad was not a reader, and he still isn't. He will admit it. I know, Dad, if you're watching, you know, I'm not telling anything that you, you won't say yourself. Um, and he doesn't understand. He doesn't know why, how I can read all these. Like, when do you have time to read all these books? <laughs> I still... I still struggle to make time to read all these books, but, um, 
so so my mom she encouraged me to read and what was great is I have great memories um there was a time when we lived in Milledgeville Georgia and I was a young girl about eight or nine or ten and um What's interesting, because I'm a Civil War fan now, is that I wish I had known, or I was a fan then. I was so young, though, I didn't know. But, you know, like Sherman, General Sherman had marched through Milledgeville and uh, on his march to the sea, and, you know, he was burning most of Georgia. But uh, I think someone did a, someone who was from Milledgeville did him a kind favor once, and he, so he didn't burn the, the town. And at the time, Milledgeville used to be the capital of Georgia, little known fact. Um, and then it was moved to Atlanta. Wait, no, Montgomery? Mm, I get these confused. But anyway, uh, yeah. So, Milledgeville, Georgia. <laughs> so it was just really cute. We lived on a lake, Lake Sinclair, and it was beautiful. We had this beautiful piece of land that uh, there's a point of it that went out into the middle of the lake. And we just, uh, oh, I do have fond memories, even though I was definitely a Yankee. Um, and uh, feeling out of place there in school. People thought I had a weird accent, and they had all these thick, heavy accents, and I didn't know what the hell was going on. Um, but there were some bucolic days there, and uh, I just remember on the weekends we'd go into the little village, you know, the downtown square of Milledgeville, and my mom would go and drop me off at the library. It's a very quaint, small little Milledgeville library, old, you know, original building. And she'd go and get groceries and leave me there for an hour or so, and I would just browse and I would check out all these stacks of books. And... Ah, yeah, and she encouraged my reading. And then when I got into history and as I was going into my teens, you know, she would, we didn't really have a lot of money, but when I'd say, oh, I want this Time Life book on Civil War, you know, boy, she, she, she paid the bills. She made, she made certain that I was able to, um, to get the books that I was, I was wanting to read and, and she always encouraged it and just never, she never, you know, made a fuss about me reading or reading too much or whatever. So thanks, Mom. These are great memories, you know. Um, and I also have a memory of, I think I picked up the reading habits from my grandfather, which is my mother's father. Yeah, my Grandpa Charles. Um, we go over to my grandparents' house in Michigan. He's not from Michigan, so um, that's where, you know, I moved around a lot when I was a kid. But grew up in Michigan until about the age of, oh, I don't know, long story, it's back and forth, anyway, but uh, fond memories of going to my grandparents' house, and, you know, my grandma loved her, her shows, she called them her shows, and she liked her soaps and stuff, but, and the, the room next to the room that had the TV was just like a nice big sitting room, and there'd be a couch there with a reading, like a table with a lamp next to it, and I just, my grandpa would be sitting there with his glasses on, sitting right next to the lamp, reading these big history books. So I don't know. I think uh, I think I just picked up on that, and uh, so I was like, "Well, what's Grandpa doing in there?" You know, and he he spent a lot of time reading. So, uh, you know, we do have reading in the family. My sister reads. She she enjoys fiction, and uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I think I'm probably the biggest bookworm in the family. But um, but yeah, we have readers. So okay, it was a great question. That's a great question, by the way. So, okay, final question. S is for Santa. Uh, it's not really a question, but books on your Christmas wish list. Well, I have to also agree, and it really made me laugh when she said it, but Sharon, uh, Sharon Goforth's channel, she said, you know, I am Santa because it's, <laughs> it's Christmas here every day. Well, I pretty much am Santa to myself. You know, if I see a book, I buy it, I order it, I take care of it. But I do... I do tend to, I think I skipped a question, you guys. I'll come back to it. I think I did. I, I skipped G. That's what I skipped. Oi. I went from oldie to mass market. I, I spelled Vlomus. <laughs> um, let's go back to G. Uh, we'll get Santa last because that's really fun. So G is for gift. Um, share some anecdotes about good and bad experiences with giving and or receiving books. So I'm going to say a good experience. I don't think I've really ever had a bad experience. Um, and it's kind of become a tradition every Christmas, which kind of ties into my Christmas wish list for Santa, uh, the Santa prompt. But um, I started reading Bernard Cornwell many years ago, The Saxon Tales. 
and there's like gosh 15 or 16 books in the series I don't even know how many now and uh, so every year I, I, I'd complete a book a, a year I'd say because I read so many other things you know if I could read one of the titles in the series a year I'd be happy um, so currently I am and so I would ask for the next book in the series every year so right now I'm reading or, or trying to get through The Empty Throne so I know I'm like I'm at least three volumes behind and I think the fourth one is coming out or already did so either way um, I've got four more books that um, that I need to get so my sister would always end up buying me the next Bernard Cornwell and uh, this year it might be Martine. I think I put that on her list for me of just ideas. So, yeah. So I, I'm hoping to get the next couple of books in the series. So that was G. Okay, I'm sorry I skipped that one. Can't have Blomus all over the place. Um, so Santa. All right, so what books are on my wish list? Well, the more um, lesser-known books... Uh, and, and like uh, like volume set volumes and stuff I, you know, I don't ask for that I mean I want something cheap and easy for everybody so they don't have to worry about it um, I'm really wanting to read the next book in the Anne Cleves Shetland series and that is White Knights so I have asked for White Knights um, hoping to get that also I've started watching the Dublin Murders on the Stars channel on cable and uh, didn't realize that it was based on the books by this author named Tana or Tana French so uh, I'm about three episodes into the series and I just I'm really intrigued by these two lead detectives and their what their backstory is and uh, and the mystery itself is kind of nutty it's like what the hell's going on here um, so it's based on I think one the first book or the or the two first books that she's written but so I asked for in the woods which is Tana French's and um, so I asked for that um, I also asked for, um, I'd like to check out the first book in the C.J. Sansom, um, Shard Lake mystery series. Um, I've heard good things about it and I've seen Steve Donahue talk about those, those, those books, uh, very highly and, uh, I'm really intrigued by them. So I've asked for Dissolution, which is the first book in the Shard Lake series. Sorry, I'm hearing some noises. Is it the ghost of Christmas present? What is happening over there? I, it happens every time. Every time I make a video, the dogs just want to do something. They want to cough, sneeze, fart, whatever. I'm just like, wow. <sighs> like children. They're like children. But um, anyway, um, yeah, so the next book, I, I asked for a big novel, like a big serious literary novel. And I've seen different, there's been videos made on it on book book two but I haven't watched yet because I want to read the book first or at least watch those videos while I'm reading it and that's 2666 by Roberto Bolaño now I haven't read any Bolaño so I'm kind of intrigued um, I have a lot of uh, reading goals as I said with literary fiction and um, I've been wanting to read Umberto Eco I want to read more uh, some Borges and I want to read R Roberto Bolaño and 2666 looked really interesting so I've asked for that. Let's see if I get it. I hope so. Um, you know, I put a lot of different things on there, like book ideas. Not, you know, not wanting or expecting all of them, but uh, those are just a few. But, uh, you know, hey, if that doesn't happen, then Santa, Santa will provide <laughs> at some point. All right, guys. Well, gosh, that was 20 minutes. I didn't realize that would take so long for seven seven prompts. But there's my Vlogmas tag. Thanks for tagging me, Sean. And I will uh, close this out. Uh, I'll link their channels below. Thanks, everybody. I hope you're having a great Sunday night. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.